Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino. And other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall gang. This house here used to be Tony's house. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Let us make an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to our Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course Italian dinner in the Tuscany Gardens. And then, VIP seating to the award-winning Rat Pack is Back show. Enjoy Vegas. It's the way it was meant to be. Hey guys, welcome back. It is Redness Day, June 1st, and uh, Adam Flowers here on Mob Vlog. Uh, you know, today we're going to talk about Chicago outfit arsonists, uh, and uh, in particular, we're going to talk about Mike Galitta. So uh, we're, we're going to bring him up anyways, but I want you guys to know, I got the book. It's got all your asses in there, all your arsonists in this little black book right here. They got a black book in Vegas for all the gamblers. You can buy the casinos, the black book. You know, the Nevada Gaming Commission. This is the Black Book of Arsonists in Chicago. All your asses is listed in this book. Every last one of you. Every, it's a hot book, too. Let me tell you. It's a real page burner. Welcome back, guys. My vlog. Red Woman, I smell singed hair over here. How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great, guy. Awesome, man. It's good to have you on again today. And uh, hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. It's good to see you guys all today. Uh, looking at the comments on the side and uh, all, everybody's here today. I mean, everybody's here today. So uh, it's good to have Ollie in the room. And I hope that you guys are uh, uh, down for what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and who's this uh, Mike Galitta? Mike Galitta. Mike was... Uh... Part of the Rush Street crew. Um, basically, he was involved in extortion, uh, pornography. Uh, he was involved in uh, gay bars. He extorted gay bars. He was basically like a muscle, a very, very heavy muscle man. But he died early. He died like at 65 years of age. He died before I left Chicago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Young. Oh, yeah. That's young. Jeez. But he went back to the Marshall Cofano era. He went way, way back. He was, uh, I don't know, he's made, in, I think, in 1933 or something like that. Oh, okay. So, long time. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be. So, we're going to talk a little bit more about him because he had a nickname, Fire Firebug. Was that his name, the Firebug? Yeah, they, no, they, no, they call him, uh, yeah, the Firebug, uh, Firebug Galetta. Uh, they also called him um, Fire Plug. <laughs> fire Plug? Yeah. Which um, is, I, I think back in the old days, they used to call him uh, Fire Hydrants. Instead of saying hydrants, they'd say a fire plug that's sitting over there because you plug into it to, to get the water out. Oh, <laughs> everybody can hear me, right? You can hear me, Red. Everyone I can, can hear, hear me, fine. right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. I, I can't. Just give me a second. My mother's texting me right now, and she's telling me, no sound, no sound. Turn up your volume. <laughs> I got to let her know. No, come on. I'd be a terrible son not to tell her to turn it up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, come on. What else? It's got to be It's got to be your volume. And, and anybody else that can't hear me, turn your volume up, too. Because, you know, <laughs> if you can't hear me, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Don Chichio de Portzalo. Hey, guys, I watched The Godfather for the first time last weekend. First time, Red, ever. 
And then I watched the second one because the first one was so damn good. Don Chichio Di Portalo. Now I get your names. It's Don Chichio in the movie uh, Godfather. Anyway, yeah, that's cool. He's a heck of a guy. He gave me a call, John. Gave me a call. Nice guy. I, I always tell my mother I love her. Of course I do. <laughs> and he does. Uh, okay, guys. Hello, everyone. Brent uh, Duke Dunhurst, you're in here. Uh, Michael Graham. Michael Graham's here. Good to see you. Miss Can't Be Wrong, Kathy Jean, Keith Helton, uh, Tim Halverson, Scott H., uh, McZag Jan, hello, go, hello again from Scotland. <clears throat> wow, you're awake over in Scotland. Bobby Bag of <laughs> Donuts, uh, Michael. Uh, well, we already said Michael Graham, Scott H, uh, David Douglas Schriever, Jim Magnifici. Uh, everybody's in here. I wonder if Brian Glade's in here. You know why? I wore the shirt for Brian Glade right here. You like the suit? <laughs> I wore the shirt. Now you can talk about the shirt. Didn't wear the pants though. Got my jammy pants on, but I wore the shirt. So. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Depp wins, JW. Really? I hope Brian watches this and I didn't wear that shirt for nothing. Burn my damn hair off of my head, too. I like yeah, Keith's comment here. He says, press the like button, not the mute button. <laughs> yeah, hit the like button, everybody. Sure. Okay. Vincent De Laurentiis. Vincent De Laurentiis says it's an ugly shirt. Vincent, you got no style, man. You just no got taste. no style. <laughs> no taste. <laughs> Good to see you in the room, everyone. Uh, Cindy Workman, uh, the Godfather, one of my favorites. Isn't it? It's crazy, no? Seriously, I mean, I never, I never watched it. I couldn't believe that when you told me that. I know, I know. I still haven't watched part three, but we're watching the offer right now on Paramount, and uh, and that's that's really. <laughs> we'll we'll get into that in the after show. We'll talk about in the after show. By the way, guys, go down to the links in the description below. We're going to jump in here to the um, into um, uh, the arsons in Chicago because did Arlington Park burn by itself? No, it did not. It was arson. <laughs> really? Every race track that burned in Chicago, it was proved arson, but they never found out who did it. Oh, yeah. Washington you know. Park, Maywood, all of them. They they burned them down, collected the insurance money, and that was it. <laughs> they built a new one. So so the um, the offer is amazing. Join us in the after party. We're going to talk about it. It's down in the links. Um, yeah, the arson, the, the guy that you know burned that Arlington track down. He was sitting over there on the beach in Florida, and he was laying next to a guy, another retired guy, and he said, "What what you do for a living?" He said, "Oh, he said I had an electrical store." He said, "What happened?" He said, I lost it due to a flood. I looked at him and said, really? He said, uh, how do you start one of those? In <laughs> <laughs> <Fucking> red. <laughs> it took a minute, but it went there. Oh, Miss Can't Be Wrong seen it so many times. It's good every time. Guys, if you if you saw it, now listen. Go to, go to mobmento.com. The link's down in the description. You saw the pizza boxes we were working on. Frank and I started working on that project like uh, back in 17. And we put them up on the website for sale. And some have sold and not many, but they've trickled out. And I, I suppose that it's expensive. So we're offering uh, the gun now, guys. If you just oh, want the gun, great. the USB stick, it's on the website. You guys can buy it. It even says, it says on the bottom, Vegas Mob Tour. And it's uh, on the side. Anyway, it's got the first video that Frank did, which was uh, Colada which you guys can see in the vault videos on the YouTube channel if you want. It's on here though, the full video. There were some things I cut out of it, the ones on that I put online because Frank wasn't happy with a couple of, I left it all in there. Um, it was just something about a nickname that he had about his glasses, he didn't like it, but he says it in this video. And he, he I cut it out so he didn't, anyway, it's a long story. You also get the Las Vegas Mobster, which is the video we did in 17. So both of those are on the gun, as well as some extras, some photos, different things, uh, a couple of photos that, that I took of him and uh, videos. Kind of neat. And the nine hours of the Blood Brothers audio, all on there. Or you guys can just get the Blu-ray disc if you still have one of those old ancient players. It's on the site as well. So go to mobmento.com or frankcolada.com. I'll get you there, too. The link's down below. Um, and also Red's book. You can get that, too, on Red Womet. Go down to the description and click on that link. All right, guys. So let's get into this. Arsons and uh, what is going on with uh, this uh, 
So what, what else did this guy do? This Mike Galita. I've never heard of him. Never in my, I've never, never heard this name before ever. So yeah, well, he was part of the Rush Street crew. He went back to Jimmy Allegretti, way, you know, way, way back. Um, Rush Street was that? That was uh, Caesar DeVarco and uh, Ken. Uh, he was part Ito, of that right? crew. He was part okay. of that crew. Okay. Um, he was just never a crew boss that, for some reason. He would have had he not died. He would have taken Vince Solano's spot. Okay. But he was, uh, if he came by, <clears throat> if he came by and wanted a piece of your business and you didn't give it up, believe me, the place had burned down. Jesus. Is that he how it actually, I mean, is that, he actually, I, he actually made threats of burning someplace. And when the police came around, they'd ask him, you know, well, do you have any suspects, anybody that you think might do it? And they say, yeah, Mike let it go talk to him and he'd have 10 alibis. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well. So what else did he uh did he do? Chicago Joe's got a question here. Sure. Uh Red what seems like Glitter was uh in your business. Uh no, he was not in my business. As a matter of fact, Frank Schweitz really laid into him and uh had some unsavory comments from I don't think I can even say the comments on here, but uh, he said if Mike messes with me, he's in a world of, you know, shit, and uh, something that he will never overcome. He was going to whack him. Um, Mike never not well, Mike only bothered me one time, and Joey Lombardo went and straightened him out. Oh, that's funny, Big Tuna. Uh, says that that uh, Big Tuna says that uh, the firebug kind of reminds me of that crazy character from uh, from Backdraft. That, yes, that the guy who started the fires in Backdraft. Yes, that was a good movie played. too. That was filmed um, in Chicago. That was filmed in Chicago. Did was it really? Yeah, they used the oh, archdiocese you know. to. De Niro was in there. De Niro was yes, De Niro there. was in there. You're right. So was uh, so was that um, uh, Donald Sutherland, and then who was the other one? The the one brother, the one uh, what's his name? Uh, um, you know what I'm talking about, right? He was married to Goldie Hawn. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. That guy. I so can't remember um, his name right now. He was such he was such a good actor in that. Mo and you know what? When I was a kid, my father was a fireman, and they had a. He was a fireman. They had. Can you even say fireman anymore? Or is it fire person now? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Kurt, the guy's name was Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yes. thank you. Yes, that's it. Kurt Russell, right? And didn't Donald Sutherland was so like his character was so creepy. Oh, I, I liked him when they interrogated me. He oh, said, he's yeah. sitting there smiling and he's, oh, yeah. you're a little boy from the cover of the got, magazine. He was up for parole and oh. he said, would you do it again? Of course I would. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a great movie. Anyway, my dad was a fireman and they had the annual <laughs> fireman's ball that year that the movie came out. Must have been in the 90s, mid 90s. And, uh, and that was the theme of the fireman's ball was that backdraft movie and they had posters of it up at the thing. And, yeah, that was that was the year it came out. Yeah, good movie. Anyway, so that's what that fire bug reminds him of, uh, that big tuna, that guy. Oh, thanks, Misty. It's a firefighter, not a fireman. It's a firefighter. Okay. Right. There you go. <laughs> uh, Chicago Joe, Kurt Russell. Yep. Um, Galita was made into Rush Street under Capo Vince Solano. Buster Sales is saying. And who was Galito aligned with, uh, Bulls and Bears? Uh, he was aligned with uh, Caesar DeVarco. So, and they all, so so when they oversaw the Rush Street operation, it was just uh, all the extortion from the nightclubs and whatnot, and and that's what they did did uh, there. Basically, yeah. But Mike specialized in one thing, pornography. He went over and leaned on Leo Weintraub on Milwaukee Avenue and took over his, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, distributory that he had there. And then he went over to Capitol News and he actually held a gun to Paula Lawrence's head. And uh, there was a Mexican guy that worked there, a big guy. And he got in a fight with him over the pistol. 
and right. he got beat up real bad. But Paul Lawrence Lair, interesting story about Mike. He had a brother named Marco, Marco Gale. And I didn't know this story because I wasn't watching the papers. But um, when I came into town with the ATF, I <clears throat> I was in Indiana. I came in through Indiana and I met a uh, an agent by the name of um, Baranowitz. And uh, Baranowitz, later on, he came to my hotel room where he was talking to me and he told me about Marco Galito. And I said, I never heard of him. You know, I never heard of Marco. And so he said, oh, yeah, he said, I was working on the cover up in Milwaukee. And he came up and he, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he said he, he came in one day and he wanted me to make a bomb for him. And so he said, I made the bomb so complex that it was too hard for him to understand. And so at the last minute, he said, could you place it on the vehicle for me? And he said, sure. <laughs> I mean, that's an invite to an agent. Can you put it on it? So uh, she lived at Lake Point Towers on no mistake on this one, Lake Point Towers. They went there. He set the, it wasn't really a bomb. It was like, what you call it, put together. Uh, it was all in plastic and everything. And he, he put it together underneath the car. And it was all set. And uh, he said, are you happy with everything? He's happy. He said, go ahead, do it. And when he did, <laughs> that was the key sign because he, he was wearing a wire. And so, bang, they moved on him. Well, Mike, or, or Brian was turned around and called the FBI or went to the U.S. Attorney's Office to get the warrant for Galinda's arrest for this move-in project, right? And before he did, he had called Pete Cullum of the FBI in Chicago. He's at the North RA. And he said, Pete, he said, do you know this guy, Galinda? And he said, no, never heard of him, never heard of him, never heard of him. He gets down there, he's talking to the assistant U.S. attorney, and he pulls out a file, and there's a big file, lots of paper on him. Lots of paper on both brothers, right? And it's all signed off by Pete Cullum. He calls Pete up, and he, he, he this is the story he told me. He called he called Pete up, and he said, Pete, when did you tell me? And he says, everybody's got a boss. <laughs> everybody's one got a boss. Watch the other one at all. He literally had a button. <laughs> That's just, you know, the, the, the C4, you know. Uh, Fifi was brought up with Taylor Street. Vincent yes, said. he was. Brett Share, 118 like it. Hey, guys, hit the like button. Be sure to hit it, okay? Uh, Galita was made. He was a made guy, Buster Sales said. Yes? Yes, he was. Um, hello to Romania, Decibalis Rex. And... Uh, <laughs> It's Romania. Romania. Yeah, all the way from Romania. Wow. Hello there, guy. Yeah, Romania. So, uh, guys, be sure to go down and check out the merch. Uh, we do have the guns going up for uh, sale. Also, the uh, the, the Blu-rays, if you sell, still one of those players. And get Red's book. Check it out in the links down below in the description, and you'll uh, you'll see them. Jim Jager has a question. Jim Jager, sure thing. Hey, Red, did you ever meet John J. Flood? He's investigated the outfit for years. How about getting him on the show? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> John and I don't get along anymore. We used to quite well. But um, mm -hmm. he showed up. The first time I met him was at uh, Frank Schweiss's hearing. They brought him in as a uh, character witness. <laughs> and he talked about the Crossroads Motel and a guy by the name of Huff. And he, Joey Lombardo was in the car and standing by it was nighttime you know like midnight one o'clock in the morning something like that and he got out and he asked frank twice he didn't know who he was to produce some id and he wouldn't produce the id he had a lead pipe in his hand according to according to testimony and he kind of raised it to him and was pushing him around john flood's a big man he's like your size he's six five okay mm -hmm. and so flood knocks him down so that Joey Lombardo passed him, he was going to run over both of them. And he testified to that in court. Uh, that's the first time I met him. I kept in touch with him over the years. He encouraged me to write a book many times. But lately, John has gone on the little liberal side too much. Um, mm -hmm. And he asked me not to post on his page. And I said, I won't. And I unfriended him from uh, Facebook. Wow. 
recently he made a comment on my page. I don't know how he got to it, but he made a, a on Memorial Day. He made a comment on my page, and I had my Marine Corps picture up on top, and he said. Red, tell them how you you stormed the beaches of Montrose. Montrose happened. <laughs> John's got a little off the deep end there. Sounds like it. But he'll be glad to tell you about himself. It sounds like it. I feel bad for John. John lost his wife, his his daughter. He's lost all his family. He's alone. Had many surgeries. He's gone through a lot. Um. I uh, <clears throat> barnyard's very, watching. Barnyard's watching right now. Here. I want to say hi to Barnyard quickly. Um, I didn't see your messages, but uh, Barnyard, um, I, I would love to. I would love to do this with you and have you tell the uh, uh, Gus Alex and the Alan Masters story. Have you ever heard his stories uh, read? Um, no, I Barnyard. haven't. Barnyard Dewey. Dewey with the the twang. He's from he's from Kentucky. Yes, he was, he was in yes, prison I have. John Gotti. You, yes, you've I heard have. him tell the stories, right? You talked to him. Yes, okay. I have. Yeah, no, I totally like to have him come on. You know, we should do that um, and have him come on and tell the story. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you. I'll reach out to you, Barnyard. Um, it's good to hear from you. <clears throat> Bulls and bears. Hey, Red, did you have any business with dealings with Kalita? No, I never did. Mike and I just never, we, I never met the man. I never met the man. Other people went and saw him for me. Hi to Canada, Matt Gaudia. Uh, he's, he's from Canada. I love Canada, Matt. That's our biggest state. <laughs> I like the Ooh. way that they spell it up there. C-A-N-A-D-A-A. -A -A -A. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All they have up there, though, is... Is, is hockey and maple syrup you know what i mean it's a it's good to see you man my wife's from canada so i have a whole lot of canadian jokes <laughs> it's our favorite state i want a subscriber <laughs> our favorite state. it's our biggest state <laughs> oh okay that's weird considering you were in the porn business red bulls and bears is saying uh not really i i was separate i mean i was separate from everybody Nobody else was in the porn business that was part of the Grand Avenue crew other than me. Nobody. That was my forte, period. That was it, huh? And and Joey coveted me. You know, he did not want anybody else messing with me. He said, you belong to us. And Schweiss yeah. said that, too. I believe Schweiss said that in the tape you, you ran. He said, you belong to us. Wow. Michael Graham, is John J. Flood associated with Flood Waste Management, which runs oh, a local Chicago? No, he's from Brooklyn, New York. I'll okay. tell you, I'll give you his bio right now. He was born in Brooklyn, New York. He went into the Army. He got uh, sent to Fort Sheridan. He was discharged at Fort Sheridan, became a willing police officer in Willing, Illinois. We passed like ships in the night. Then he became a deputy sheriff for the sheriff's department. Never met the guy. And then all of a sudden, he popped up in Family Secrets. Or no, not Family Secrets, uh, Frank Schweiss's trial. Oh, uh, Matt, it's a province, buddy. <laughs> Provinces, states, yeah. you know, I mean, come on. What's the difference, right? They copy everything that we do here. I swear, Canada copies us left and right. Yeah. I love you guys, though, in Canada. I really do. Yes. I never had any problems with Canadians except French Canadians. <laughs> but Canadians, you know the difference between them and canoes? Canoes no. tip. Yeah. <laughs> no, in Canada, they don't tip. Do you, Matt? I know you guys know. don't. Fess up. I know it. When I worked on the street and I was like, where are you guys from? And they're like, Canada. I'm just like, ah, throw my hat down. Go away. <laughs> no point in this show. <laughs> it's true. See, he admits it. <laughs> Bulls and Bears is asking you a good question. Hey, Adam, have you have you ever <laughs> have you met any other outfit guys before besides Frank C? Well, I'm gonna just I'm gonna plead the fifth. How's that sound? I'm gonna plead the fifth. Okay. I mean, besides Red, but I mean, you guys know I know Red, but you know, I mean, Red was a porn store and he's really a mobster, but you know, 
he come on, he you've met you've met other people, but you just don't want to name their names. You're not, not going to say any names. People are going to go out and you know name names. Hey, I get phone calls sometimes, and it's like, oh, I got this story about this today, and I'm like, hey, uh, come, let me, you know, tell the story. And oh, no, 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 I, I'd rather my voice not. You know what I need is one of those voice changers. That way, I can interview people, and then they, you know, put the silhouette and blah, 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 when they talk. That's what I need. <laughs> then maybe what I can about, get some some interesting what about people. Calabrese? You met Calabrese. Oh yeah, Jr. Frank Calabrese. I'm sure you guys can watch that. But what am I? Yeah, there you go. There's another one that you guys can go look at. But so there know, are others. Your memory's fading. See, my memory's going, man. It's 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 the drugs. They're wearing off. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, corn pop, corn pop. I watching Adam. Be careful. All right, fine. Ed. Corn pops the man. So, um, Colada should be considered an outfit guy along with Junior Calabrese. Both were associates, underlings of Made Met. Yeah, th there you go. I mean, Buster. That's what. That's the. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, it's. That's what it is. Uh, Bulls and Bears. If I'm ever out in Vegas, I'll be hitting up my guy Adam. I'll be hitting my guy Adam up. Awesome. I hope that you do. Because everybody seems that people are coming out here and they're really enjoying things. Uh, they're doing the tours. And, uh, you know, here, here's a couple of people that thought it was really good. You guys ought to take this tour. It was fantastic. I recommend it 100%. I love the Frank videos. Those were great. Personal stories. Yeah, I mean, personal stories. Very close with Frank Colotta and you get, you get the vibes. You got to do this. Oh, hell, the best part of my trip out here it's uh, everything about casino that you wanted to see and it's cool to see see it all this was like fucking awesome it was amazing awesome awesome oh unbelievable adam is just first class great information great tour fascinating 10 out of 10. take the tour you'll have a great time you're gonna learn a lot you're gonna have a awesome. fun time too absolutely great it was awesome. I would definitely recommend it. It was good to learn about the history. It was awesome, man. I enjoyed it. Fantastic. I, I loved it. What did you think, Mo? It was great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was great, great. Very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. It was great. It was awesome. It really Highly was. recommend. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I do it. There you go. See, people are liking it. All right. So we knew Jen, we were going to. Jen wants to know how much of the tour. 119.95. Listen, 119.95. The price is going up because the freaking gas keeps going up. It's almost five and a half bucks a gallon out here, and so and the to drive you around in an air conditioned vehicle. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's you know very very uh, very very uh, it's a fun tour, and but it's 119.95. Use Mob Blog the code when you buy your tickets. Either call the number, use Mob Blog, or put it in online, and you get. 20% off. It makes it less than 100 bucks a ticket. I don't know how much longer that's going to be like that, though. Because every week we get to see Adam get kissed. Michael, I know you're jealous. It's all right. <laughs> Ryan Brown, Red, did you know Pudgy, Mata uh, Pudgy Matas is Mike's second cousin? So yes, I did. Story from the game. I did. Before. He got, oh, he, got for, uh, he got pinched for he um, got pinched for leaning on uh, the Glory Hole Tavern. Okay. And I called the owner, Bob Hugel, and I said, I'll take care of it for you. He said, don't mind. Don't worry. I called the FBI. <laughs> that was the end of that. He walked on that. Uh, the guy that took the beef on it was uh, two two guys took the beef. They stood up and, and said, no, that he didn't, didn't have anything to do with it, and they pleaded guilty. And so he walked on that one. But Pudgy was very vocal. Gotcha. He, he and I never argued, ever. Hmm. Uh, he, he's still around, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I believe he is. So, um, seen any good boxing cards out in Vegas, Adam? Spirit of the Justice. Out. What's a boxing card? No way. Uh, that means an event. Oh, a boxing match? Yeah, coming up. Oh, no, you know, I haven't been to any. But, you know, I did. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should even say it. Oh, man. I'm going to get myself in trouble for this one. Uh, Here we go. Uh, should I uh, let me see um is it in I'm gonna get in trouble for this I know it I shouldn't do this but I'm going to um 
Um, maybe it's in celebrity, celebrity thing. Maybe it's in. How you doing, Leanne? <laughs> who's, who's in the room, Rad? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm scanning my files for something quickly, and I'm, I'm coming up blank right here. Well, you do. I'm going to say hi to some people. Please do, and, and I'll answer this question. Questions. Keith, uh, did the Hansons brothers, uh, Hansons burn down a horse barn too? Yes, several, several, like eight or nine. <laughs> Plus, Kurt burned his own place, the Valley View Yak. Uh, he, he would collect the insurance, but he didn't pay the premiums. <laughs> uh, my gosh. Um, how's the weather? It's hot. It's 92 degrees here today. <laughs> it's hot. Um, Thank you, man. So... I don't want to. I don't want to go here. But when when they burned down these these barns, they emptied the horses out of them, right? No, no, they killed the horse. I, I knew I didn't want to ask. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, so that was uh, the biggest atrocity. The burning was, you know, it was it was just inhumane. So there was a, a thing in town, and uh, there was a, a show in town. And it was it, it was called uh, Beecher's Madhouse, and it was a man. Was it a fun? It was a fun show. We did we got away with everything there, and and people weren't so you know they weren't so crazy like they are today, and so um, hmm. now I lost it. Hold on, damn it, Red. All right, sorry. I'm gonna I'll I'll, I'll get back to it later. Uh, I gotta so, tell you, Black Rain eighty one. Uh, do I miss the food in sh Chicago food? Yes, I do. <laughs> what is the difference here? I got a, um, a 60 I, here. Let's, one little, day. let's Adam. lose Jalenso. Adam, prove you're a magical and disappear. C-A. You know what I could do, Lou? I can make you disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I could. One click at a little button and you're gone, buddy. <laughs> Don't forget that. Tony Elizabeth, loses. Elizabeth turns around. She says it right here. Killing horses is vile beyond belief. Any animal abuse is done by psychopaths. Those boys, that's what I'm saying. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to ask. I didn't want to ask. I really didn't. But I knew we were going to was gonna go there. I knew it. I shouldn't have asked. Adam, clip him. <laughs> Don Chichio. It's close, buddy. <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> <laughs> Push me a little bit further. Come on. <laughs> 92 so, degrees in West Virginia. <laughs> my gosh. Uh, where 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 do Italians live at in Chicago? I don't know. Where? All over the place. They have their own neighborhoods. Yeah. Everybody I mean, did. Still, you know, used to be. I don't think it's like that. Street. There's still some in the patch, but they're kind of all over. Most of them moved to the suburbs. It's still like that, huh? Unless you go to Highwood. And, well, that's a suburb, too. Well, why wouldn't you want to... Uh, why wouldn't you want to um, uh, uh, live in a neighborhood? They all the chaos. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, in a neighborhood, you know, where you, you got you got each other's backs and stuff, you know? That's the way to, you know, you want to be. Right? Right. And just like Bulls and Bears, he, he turns around and says here... Uh, I hit the wrong button. Huh. Elmwood Park. Elmwood Park, Melrose Park, that area. A lot of Italian people there. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you guys. Uh, Good Italian people. The salt of the earth. <laughs> Hardworking people. Uh, so, so I did. There is, I, a, there is a big uh, Italian presence in Addison, too. Addison, Illinois. Thank you, Bulls and Bears. Um. <laughs> Now I have to look one more thing up before I tell you this story. Um, um, <laughs> uh, Michael Graham, the entire point of burning down the horse stables is to burn the horses with it in it, where there's a huge portion of insurance money and a loss. You're right. All right, enough. Enough. The guy can't, man. It's just, it's yeah. just. Oh, well, you collect the money on the horses now because the horses are worth money, right? Is that what you're telling me? That's what he said. Oh, come on. 
All right, we got to lighten the mood. So uh, you asked if I saw any fights out here, fight cards in Vegas. I actually was part of uh, Muff for a, for a couple of nights. Uh, I was the referee uh, of Muff, which is the um, micro ultimate fighting federation, I believe is what it was. Anyways, it's little people, they fight. And um, and and I was the referee for uh, for the micro micro unprofessional. That's what it is. The micro unprofessional fighting federation, the micro unprofessional fighting federation. So I was the I was the referee, and uh, that was Mini pa Pasquale and uh, Mini um, um, Mini. Who was it at the time? It was uh, it was Pasquale and. Anyway, yeah. So I ref the the fight every night, and uh, and then at the end they would end up beating the hell out of me in the in the ring. It was all you know, it's all put on. But that was that was a lot of fun, man. We had a it was a good time. <laughs> I know refereeing little people and me being six foot five. It's just it wasn't fair, you know. But still, they 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 beat the hell out of me, man. It's unfair <laughs> two people against one. You know what I mean? It's not it's not fair at all. Little people, man, when they punch, you know where they are. They're down there by the, you know, by the, the important parts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer this. Bobby, Bobby Vega Donuts, if you stick around to the after show, we'll answer this for you. Adam, how about the horse head in the bed and the godfather? Yeah, we'll talk about that, Bobby. We'll talk about that. Uh, uh, Adam, did any of the fighters get short with you? No, not a one. They yeah. not one. <laughs> You know, Adam, I have a comment to make. That is the first time I have ever seen, they like to be called little people, don't they? Well, you know, at, at Beecher's Madhouse, we didn't say that. We had flying bartenders and we used the M word. Oh, okay. <laughs> then we okay. had a big, there was a big, in the in the side of the, the a nightclub, there was a big elephant. And, uh, and, and <laughs> listen, there's a giant elephant. It's like P.T. Barnum, man. It's just like a circus threat. And uh, and the elephant's butthole was facing the a crowd, and so when the when like Mark Cuban came into the club and he'd order a ten thousand dollar bottle, right? They had the the little people dressed like a uh, bumblebees or a little you know whatever, and and they'd come out of the butt of the elephant. They'd crawl out of the butt and they'd have a <laughs> cable hooked to them and they'd zig yeah, them across the night. They'd zig them across the nightclub and then they'd lower them down to the table and they have the bottles with them, you know, and that's how they deliver the bottle service in the nightclub. And uh, you know, sparklers going was, off on them and everything. I was going to say that's the first Afro-American that you showed a picture of, little person that I've ever seen. Oh, really? Are you come on? No, Pardon? No, nah, there's, there's every every ethnicity, man. I've run into every ethnicity. But the, they're different, though. Some of them are, are proportionally right and some aren't. And, um, yeah. They don't live very anyway, long. No, I just I just lost a buddy, too, who was, I worked with over there. He was he was a cool, cool, cool dude. Um, well, that was the were, first the, were the tickets half off for the show? No, they weren't, Bobby Bagadonuts. No <laughs> half off tickets. <laughs> Miss can't be wrong. Oh my God, I really am. <laughs> Stick around, Miss can't be wrong. I'm telling you that you never know where the hell this show is going to go. You know what I mean? We start talking about backdraft in the nineties and the next thing you know, it's little people flying out of, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So sure, Buster, Buster says it, uh, mention it's, it's a, a slang. slang term. It's not an actual word. It's an urban thing. Yes. I think you're right about that. So thank you. Buster. What is it? A small venue? No, it was a big venue. <laughs> God. It was a small fight, Adam. Yes, didn't very short, <laughs> didn't last long. God, unbelievable! You guys, you guys got minds that live in the gutters. All of you, every one of you. I got put up a picture like this, and the next thing you're, oh my God, you know. I mean, what's Adam thinking? <laughs> Oh, geez. So, like the like button, guys. Be sure to smash it. Smash the like button. You know Echo Bay out there at Lake Mead where they uh, this, this body is washed up in the barrel now, okay? And that washed up, but the, the, the lake's going down so far. But barrels with bodies are showing up in them. And they think that the guy that's Johnny Pappas was in the barrel. He had a bullet in his I head. I believe he is. Kmart shoes on. But think he had that like that's deck shoes. You go out to your boat, you know, deck shoes. And this, but this he owned Pappas, the boat there. He owned the boat there. Well, this Pappas is supposed to be. Well, that's the thing. He's at he the owned scene. the boat there. It was for sale. 
and his car was left at Caesar's Palace, and yep. he also managed the marina that was there. And that's Echo Bay Marina. Now that was owned by the and Echo Bay Marina was financed by the Teamsters Pension Fund out of Chicago. Argent Corporation ran it. The marina, the Fremont, the Hacienda, of course, the Stardust, but also Echo Bay. So which he was the manager of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Managed it, had a boat slip there, had a boat, and went down there to sell somebody his boat. He's going to go show him, and then went missing. See? I think somebody put a barrel on his boat and said, let's get in. Let's go, buddy. In First you go, Johnny. What does the sales have to say? Uh, it's definitely hot. Didn't stop Rusty from trying to... We might Sorry. From... Sorry, Red, I took the comment down. Schweiss... Schweiss coming in didn't stop Rush Street from trying to jack Wemet's shop from Grand Avenue. Yes, it did. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. When huh. Joey was in prison, when Joey was in prison, um, he made some mention about me because he wanted me to buy my material from him at l and Sales on Milwaukee Avenue. And I didn't buy it there. I went directly to the West Coast. I brought everything in from out of state, and that aggravated him. He wanted me to do business with him, and he made some comment, and he said, uh, "Schweiss went off on uh, he went off on a tangent about." Him. He said, "If Mike, if Mike even bothers you, he's in a world of <laughs> yeah. he'll never recover from." <laughs> right, <laughs> right. From. Guys, hit the like button if you're out there. I see a couple of loves out there too from Facebook. So. It's a lot, usually Facebook. Facebook, we usually have many viewers. So that's that's good to see that some of you guys are tuning in uh, through there. Most everybody's on YouTube. Uh, but it's good to have all of you with us today. And, of course, we have Red Wimet. If you guys are new to the channel, hit the like button. Hit the prescribe button. Over here we say prescribe, not subscribe, because that's, that's how we say it here. John Apollo Apollo, who's got a tavern slice? Who's got a tavern-style pizza sauce recipe? Hey, John, you're on the wrong channel. John Apollo Apollo. Actually, you're not. <laughs> go look at the go look at how to make Chicago style pizza video. And we go over the sauce and how you got to make the right sauce. It's not gravy. We call it sauce. I call it sauce anyways. You can call it gravy if you want, but I think it's called sauce. So gravy's brown. Sauces are red, you know? Right. And that's what I think anyway. Like I always said gravy was like what you put on the mashed potatoes and on your, you know, that's uh, Thanksgiving correct. dinner is gravy, but not uh when you get italian beef they talk they talk do you want it with gravy turd ferguson you're looking at the counter on facebook 15. Oh, that's good there's there's about 140 on on youtube right now uh the weather's great out here guys it's starting to get a little bit warm but that's uh that's okay we um you guys you know we got air you're ready for it you got air conditioning in the vehicles <laughs> uh, air conditioning in the vehicles you got uh we got little portable fans everybody in the vehicle gets a little fan too so it moves the air around in the vehicle when it gets to be 115 man it's hard to keep things super cool cold but it's you know okay so elizabeth francis what a, a novel uh i wonder how many bodies got dumped in lake mead and how many bodies in the desert that will never be found I would imagine that eventually there'll be a construction in the desert as LV expands, uh, like how they keep finding bodies from Barbary Coast days here in San Francisco. Dead sailors, pimps, prostitutes, and various grifters. We always have our own homegrown organized crime. Most of the current thugs are in city politics now. Very true. I, and I, and I, I agree with all of it, but I can only quote one thing, Irv Weiner. We were driving out in Las Vegas, and he turned around, he looked at the desert. There was nothing. We were talking about just baloney, right? And he turned around and said something to me about, uh, um, <laughs> he said, if Gabriel ever blows his horn, you're going to see a, a more than the population of Las Vegas rise up and, and go back home. Wow. I, I, I turned around wow. and just looked at him. I didn't, I didn't know what to say. That's crazy. I you don't know, think that is crazy, but I'll tell you what, I, I've heard some stories out here. I can't repeat them, but I've heard a few stories um, about construction projects that went on various and they're rumored, but they're rumored amongst employees, uh, you know, various, uh, let's just say big resorts. And, you know, when they want to develop land, they don't want to be held up with, you know, investigations and whatnot. So if they stumble across things. They usually just kind of concrete over them. 
Keep going. Yeah. 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 If not, your, your job site's going to be shut down. You're going to have CSI in there. You know what I mean? And that's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Weeks and weeks and weeks delay. And that costs the company's money. And they just keep going. Just keep going. That's how Vegas is. You know, and when it's busy in Vegas, Red, certain times of the year, when they need maximum room occupancy, you know what they do? If somebody dies in a room, it has a heart attack, whatever. The coroner, Clark County coroner, requires the room to be quarantined for two weeks for disease control. So, so they stick him outside. <laughs> yeah, the security will he put the guy in, in, in the lobby. He had a heart put, attack. Put the guy in a chair and weekend at Bernie his ass down to the pool and go, uh, coroner, he died down here. I don't, his shit's up in the room. You need us to bring it down for you? These greedy bastards. That's how that's how badly they want to keep those rooms open for people in the, you know. Anyway, don't quote me on that, by the way, guys. I heard that through a you know a friend who uh scuttlebutt. Told, Scuttlebutt. Yeah, a little scuttlebutt, exactly. A little scuttlebutt. Um, so so uh hel hello everybody. ADD Central Buster Sales. Yeah, no, you could say that on this channel. It's definitely all over the place. We were talking about fires when we got going here. If you're just tuning in, so far we haven't gotten to anything about any arsonists yet. <laughs> Have we read? No, no, pretty no. much not. And now we're it's just crazy. Well, we talked about Donald Sutherland. And how creepy he was in backdraft. Everybody agrees. Oh, no, no, not Donald Trump. Not Donald Trump. Donald Sutherland. <laughs> I said Donald Sutherland, right? <laughs> Donald Sutherland in there. I That's what I said. <laughs> Didn't I? Unbelievable. When we play it back, I'll laugh. <laughs> Either I'll laugh at me or I'll laugh at you. <laughs> One of us will. One of us will. Uh, laughing is good for your blood pressure because when you laugh, it raises your blood pressure. And then after you're done laughing, your blood pressure decreases. It goes back. So you should laugh a lot, guys. I it's must have high blood pressure all the time. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays underground in Vegas or uh, underwater in Vegas until the lake recedes. <laughs> what happens in Vegas ends it's up like in a, a barrel on Lake Mead. Oh, it's that, like a rhyme. Oh, gosh, that's funny. Great show. Can't wait for the after show. David Grimpy's right along with us. I mean, he's, you know, Thank he's you, got Dave. the ADD too, I think. So <laughs> look at Brent's already talking about Donald Sutherland and Beer Fest. He was great in Beer Fest. Let's change the subject again. Oh, let's talk about a movie now. What was Who his was name Jimmy? in that movie? What was it? He was called something, the fire, whatever. And when they went in, the only thing I got a real kick of, they picked his mind to say, Okay, who did this? Kurt Russell went to him with um, um, uh, De Niro, and they said, "Who would do this?" And he gave him a profile. But then, when it came to come time to court, he had a big smile on his face, Sutherland, and he said, "Oh yeah, I did it. Oh yeah, I did it." And then he said, "Wait a second, I have a question to answer." Uh, De Niro said, and he said, "Would you do it again?" He said, "Oh yeah." He said, "If I got out, I'd I'd burn everything. I love the animal." I love the animal. He called it the animal. It's, it's crazy. Ronald Bartell was his name in the movie. Ronald. The, Ronald. The, they called him Ronald the something. Ronald. The... Oh, God. Here we go. It was good. Ronald the what? I don't know what Misty's trying to say here. L? Ronald Bartel portrayed uh, Hannibal Lecter. He could be compared to Hannibal Lecter. Donald, he was Donald Shadow. Shadow, he was saved by Donald Shadow Ringham Gale. Now, I don't know. What, why are we, we're, you know, Ronald seriously. McDonald. He called him Ronald McDonald. Is that what it was? Yeah. Devin Morrell. Hey, Adam and Red. Hey, Devin. Good to see you here today. Uh, Ronald McDonald, LOL. Was it Donald said was good in Clute? Is he is he laughing? Are they guys, are, is it or not? I don't know if the it is or isn't. The first thing I saw him in was I'm Clute. Have to watch the movie. The first movie I saw him was in with Jane Fonda, and it was Clute. That was the first movie I ever saw him in. Man in the Moon, hello from England. Hey, buddy. Uh, across hey, the buddy. Pond. Good to see you. Hit the like button and uh, be sure to hit the subscribe. Uh, Joe Colada. Hey, I joke a little, but that's Joe Colada. <laughs> Mac Lynch hey. is a question here, or 
excuse me, what's his name? Red, you're on the Cow? East Coast or the golf side. Which side? You're on the golf side, right? I am not on the golf side. I'm up in the golf. I'm all the way at the top of the golf. I'm always over towards the Mexican side. I am in Panama City Beach. Uh, yeah, Panama City. What a nice place. You know, Beach. that's where all the hurricanes go. Panama <laughs> City Hurricane Beach. Michael. Damn near killed me. <laughs> See, Joe Colotti, he likes the show, too, today. It's all over the place, and it's the thumbnail that gets you in here. I said that to Red last night. Like, just It's got to be a good thumbnail, you know what I mean? It's got a Chicago arsonist, something, you know, and people, well, all right, why not, right? And This then, man uh, is the expert. This man is the expert right over here. <laughs> <laughs> why not, right? Uh, hope everybody's well. Uh, uh, Cindy Workman wishes you well, too. Joe Herman, hey. It's good to see Be you. Be well, Joe. Be well, Herman, Joe. Oh, God bless you. I like your new avatar, Herman. That's cool. Good to see you. Uh, Herman, you look great. Misty Robka, thanks. Thank you very much for the super sticker. Uh, hello, L. <laughs> the old bait and switch. There you go, Jim Magnifici. You never know what the hell's going to happen on this. Um, my Street Stories comments are blocked. What are you talking about? Completely they, disinterested. They, 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 they took him off of, of YouTube, and he's going on another format. Oh, my God. I saw him say something about uh, this morning about getting on the Rumble. What yes. happened? Well, why? Why did they take it down? What did they do? Why? What's the deal with that? I don't know. My gosh. <laughs> no, he didn't do anything wrong. Yes, I'm clickbaiting all of you. Anyways. <laughs> um, I've been following oh. the Lake Mead story. It's getting serious out there. Yeah, it is. I'm telling you, it's, uh, you know, and one one company out here, you know what they're doing? Oh, my God. The Hold water. On. Hold on. The wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. I got to show you the picture of this. <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, come on. Give me a There we go. Save. Boom. And yes, it is, Herman. It's very true. Hey, Red, what about Lake Mead? Is it, is it true? Yes, it's very true. Yeah, here it is. Come on. Come on. There it is. <laughs> yeah, one company out here, local company, selling Lake Mead corpse water now. <laughs> now look at the disclaimer on the bottle. <laughs> it says since 1935. <laughs> That's when they filled up Lake Mead, you know, uh, Lake Mead corpse water. And it's got the little barrel with the skeletons dancing around the barrel at the top. And uh, yeah, why not? You know, and it's, it's not like tap water, too. It's dirty ass water out of Lake Mead. Somebody went down there with a bucket, started filling, put the labels on there, selling them out of their boutique here in town. But they have a disclaimer on there. It says, it says this water is not contaminated. <laughs> God. Why didn't I think of that? That's something I would think of, and I didn't think of it. That's just, ah, man, what a great idea. What a great idea. I'm You've been out doing water. tours, man. You've been out doing tours. You didn't have time for it. God, my God, I could have done. It's a killer drink, Matt said. Yeah, it's a killer drink. <laughs> <laughs> One shot, you're good for the whole day. <laughs> Facebook is prejudiced against Sicilians. Uh, how far is Lake Mead from Vegas? Matt Gods. So, Matt. Lake Mead's right next to, to Vegas. That's where we get our water, man. About so, 40 miles, isn't it? Not even. I mean, you could drive out. 30? If you're in Henderson, you can get there in 20 minutes. Wow. My side of town takes 40 minutes, but I'm all the way in the west. So, Question, wow. Adam. How far is it from Circus Circus? How far is what from Circus Circus? Lake Mead. Oh. um, 30 miles, maybe? I would guess. I mean, if you, if you wanted to, to go... By uh, uh, a car, I mean, maybe, you know, if you flew there, it'd probably be shorter. Well, if, if, I, was, if, I, was, if I left my car at Circus Circus and somebody drove me out to Lake Mead to look at my boat, I definitely have my deck shoes on for sure, or gym shoes, so I didn't slip on the boat. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Corn Pop says it's 17 miles. There you go, 17 miles. Thanks, Corn Pop. I was looking it up, but screw it. Somebody else looked it up. Thank you. 
Um, <clears throat> Adam, when does Lake Mead, when does Las Vegas run out of water? Las Vegas runs out of water when Lake Mead runs out of water. And that won't be long. Yeah. That's a nice trunk ride. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I know. No, never. Fuck that. No way. Uh, no. I could see Lake Mead from uh, airplane flying into Vegas. Yes, Herman, you can fly right over Lake Mead when you're coming in from the from the east. So why would they kill Papas? Well, I guess that uh, from what I understood, something about he got upside down, something at the Stardust is yeah. what I think what I read. We'll talk about it in the after party, guys. If you're new here, go down in the description, click on uh, <laughs> click on the after party link. Red, are you writing a mob book? Someone mentioned I wrote it in one, the chat. And, and another one is already written, but it's not out yet. But I did write my one book. It's available yeah. on your link down below. Yes. And you guys can look at that, redwomet.com. Hey, guys, I heard there's a large homeless population living in the drain tunnels uh, under the city. John McShane, there are I can attest to that one. There are over 200 miles of underground storm drains in Las Vegas. We have a serious flooding problem when it rains. We're in a bowl. And so the ground out here can't absorb the water. And when it downpours in monsoon season and whatnot, the streets turn to rivers. And I, when I first moved here, it was still pretty crazy. But they have all of these... Uh, all Tunnels. these storm drains now. And so, uh, anyway, the people move into them. They're called the mole people, the tunnel people. <laughs> True. <laughs> Look it up. On, there's, there's there's all kinds of stuff on YouTube about it. It's the crazy. Eloys. The Morlocks. The Morlocks. <laughs> They're down there. <laughs> God. Harlan, you're, thinking of, Harlan Owens. you're thinking of Dow scrubbing bubbles. All right. Where did it come from, Red? Plug it in. Plug it in. What's that from? Plug it remember. in, plug it in. I, I don't know. That got stuck in my brain this morning. It's a I jingle. Got it's a jingle. That it's from a commercial ago. or something, right? I sat down. I'm like, plug it in, plug it in. Red's like, I haven't heard that in a long time. And I said, yeah, what's that from? Nobody Herman remembers. Herman, Red and I can't Herman remember. Herman says he's flying in from Chicago. Well, it'd be good to see you guys when you come in. Um, it'll be really good to see you. And uh, guys, um, Glade. Thank you. White at 68. It's from the Glade commercial. Plug it in, plug it in. You yes. Know, yes. It, it, air yeah, but, 70s. It's a perfect. 70s commercial, Herman. Oh, my God. It's that old? Man. Air scent commercial. Everybody knows. Everybody remembers <laughs> what it is, except I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh, my God. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you couldn't guys. remember where it was from. Adam, when I was in Las Vegas in 91, the news was covering how the Las Vegas was running out of water, but the kept building casinos. John Ramsey said that. Yeah. Yeah. They've been talking about it for a long time. And it's like, what do we do? You know? So Adam Red, how are you guys keeping well? I hope uh, best guys on YouTube. Thanks so much, Mo. Good to Thank see you. I hope Mo. you're doing well. Um, hope you're doing very well. Why would, uh, who would have thought we had electricity in the seventies? <laughs> Right. So uh, it's good to see all of you guys. Hey, quickly, we're going to go over to the uh, we're going to go over to Red's channel. And we're going to do our after party, guys. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with you today. Red, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, it's it's always good to see. Always good to have you. And uh, guys, the Las Vegas mobster, it's available. You can get it. It's 20 bucks on Blu-ray or you can get the USB gun. They're 40 bucks. That includes shipping and everything. You can't beat so, the USB gun. It's great. It's cool. It's got the first video, uh, uh, the first video that was done by my predecessor, Robert Allen, Collada, which has Dennis Griffin, Dennis Arnoldy, and Frank Collada being interviewed by Robert for an hour. And um, Frank talks about his nickname, by the way, on this video that he didn't normally uh, talk about and, uh, and uh, never was put up online. So... Las Vegas Mobster, you get that. You get the nine hours of the Blood Brothers. You get um, uh, some extras, a couple photos off of his phone and uh, video. It's pretty cool. Anyway, Red, it's been good seeing you. We're going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, be sure to click down in the link below uh, to go to the store if you want to buy one of those and support the channel. And, uh, hey, and uh, Red, it's been fun. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you, Adam. God bless you. you. God bless you, too. See you in a few minutes, Red.